Now, as President Muhammadu Buhari signed the amendment of the new Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020 into law, policymakers and business analysts have described some new provisions in the Act as a welcome development. Many believe the reform will tone down regulatory hurdles and ease the business environment to stimulate growth. The new CAMA 2020 has other reforms to make it easier and cheaper for small and medium-sized enterprises. The resultant effect will be that a pattern of hitherto unparalleled growth and development has emerged on the corporate horizon with Nigerians bracing up to the task. Joining us live on this matter is Michelle Agatise, who is a lawyer. Also, we we'll have Taiwo Oyedele, fiscal policy partner with PwC. And we also have Johnson Chiku, the CEO of Kauri Assets Management. Good to have you, gentlemen. Good morning, all. Good morning, Emeka. All right. Thank you for having us. Excellent. Good to have you all this morning. We'll begin the conversation with you, uh, Taiwo. We are aware that this act has been 30 years coming. First of all, is it good news, bad news, or somewhere in the middle? Which is it? <laughs> no, it's certainly good news. Um, <clears throat> it's 30 years late, but they say better late than never. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I need to, you know, I don't know why government is saying it's an amended uh, complex and allied matter as art. Actually, what it is, is a reenactment. And it's a significant improvement on the old version. It addresses a lot of issues around governance, transparency, use of real business, uh, not only starting a business, but running a business as well as dealing with insolvency uh, when a company is unable to continue in business. Mm. One, one good thing about this law is that it was made possible by a strong collaboration between the public sector and the private sector. And this is what we say always that government has to look at national issues as a collaboration between private sector and the public sector. That way you get the best from what your people have to offer. Uh, so if you make it difficult to do business, it will be almost impossible to create jobs and to grow the economy. Mm. So overall, uh, it's indeed uh, good news. All right. We have a legal practitioner with us, Michelle Agatise. And this, the next question is for you. What aspects of the Act are particularly progressive as compared to the Act it is repealing, uh, Michelle? Okay, thank you very much, Amaka. And um, conscious of time, you know, as Taiwo mentioned, this is a repeal and reenactment. So if we were to go through each and every issue, I'm sure we would not be able to leave this conversation today. That's correct. Um, for that reason, I'm just going to identify three distinct buckets of the new camera. And um, from that, just flesh it out just a little so that you begin to see some of the new changes right, that um, have come about as a result of this new camera. Um, these three buckets that I have identified, first and foremost, I'll look at issues that are particularly important to micro, small, medium enterprises, as well as incorporation issues. Then on the second bucket, we talk about issues concerning mergers and acquisitions, where there are extensive provisions relating there to. Then there are matters relating to insolvency, right? And fourth and finally, I'll just touch very, very briefly on transparency issues. Now, with respect to micro SMEs, as well as incorporation issues, you would find that there are new advents and new changes that seek to make it more attractive, you know, for investors, small business players to incorporate and formalize their business structures. So you have, you know, reduction in buying fees on the one hand, you have issues such as electronic signatures being applicable and available, electronic filing being introduced and formalized in that process. And you also dispense with some naughty issues, right, that were more complied with in their breach. So issues such as companies having to have a common seal, for example, you'd find that many companies did not have that. Many small companies did not have that. Issues as to having a company secretary, for example. Many small companies did not have company secretaries. So issues such as that have been dispensed with. You know, you now have virtual meetings 
that are available. So smaller companies would not want to host a you know, physical general meeting and the like. And this just makes it easier right, for them to interface with the formal structure and the formal process that you know, incorporation and having a formal business structure provides. Now that's for MSMEs and incorporation. The second bucket I would like to look at is with respect to mergers. Now, sometime late last year, we had the passage of the FCCPA, which is now you know, colloquially known as the Competition Act. And one of the introductions in the Competition Act was that it um, repealed several sections of the Investment and Securities Act that had to deal with mergers. So as a result of that, you know, for legal practitioners such as myself, you know, there was a lot of legal gymnastics as to, you know, what exactly is now the basis, legal basis for mergers in Nigeria. And the newcomer has set out extensive and expansive, you know, provisions relating to mergers and acquisitions. And these extensive and expansive provisions are even more progressive than we previously had in the ISA. And they reflect the corporate practice that we had begun to, you know, proceed with in terms of mergers and acquisitions. And just to set out very, very quickly, you know, on that aspect, you know, mergers and acquisition practice also goes beyond just, you know, the combination of companies. Sometimes you have to have, you know, schemes of arrangement and the like. And with those schemes of arrangement, there used to be a lacuna as to how to approach the courts to get, you know, consent, sanctions, ETC. All of that, you know, which we never had clarity on beforehand, has been clarified, you know, in the newcomer. So for us, what that does is that, you know, it makes um, the processes much, much clearer and it makes it more certain as to how to proceed. And just quickly to go to the third bucket as to insolvent. I, I ask you to quickly. You know, this so, is a so period, especially to... with the stress in the economy, that we see that, you know, um, you know provisions relating to insolvency, business were problematic. So as a result of that, you know, um, we had to see provisions relating to business rescue, which we previously did not have in Nigeria. You know, we just had straight into insolvency. And what this does for us is that, you know, it makes that insolvency process more robust. And as Taiwan Johnson will know, you know, um, you know, OTC derivatives, which is a financial instrument that you have all over the world, you know, piggybacks on things such as closeout netting you know, based on ISDA, MASDA agreements that have been, you know, sophisticated agreements they have internationally. And close out netting, you know, as a, an end of life company um, process was not previously recognized in Nigeria. And what you have with the newcomer is that it introduces, you know, the basis for things such as close out netting, um, you know, which can then be very useful when you're dealing with over the counter derivatives. And just very, very finally, um, and very conscious of time. Michelle, I have to, I have to ask you to hold your thoughts. Michelle, sorry, I have to yeah. ask you to hold that final thought. Let's move oh, on right. to Johnson. That's we'll right. come back to you most definitely. Now, Mr. That's Chuku, right. um, you've had the conversations between Michelle and, of course, uh, Mr. Oyedele there. How would this act, in your own opinion, be instrumental in triggering uh, foreign investment or incentivizing small business owners to incorporate companies uh, as it is uh, objective? Okay, um, thank you very much for having me again uh, this morning, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. In the first place, uh, to trigger foreign uh, direct investment to the country, the key thing is to improve our ease of doing business, and uh, uh, one of the expectations of this camera, the new camera, is that it will help improve the ease of doing business. Of course, we saw an improvement in ease of doing business, which moved from uh, 169 to about 130. And uh, we should be uh, pushing to compete with the uh, other African countries like Mauritius, that have an ease of doing business ranking of about 13. Uh, if we, uh, if this act actually contributes to improving the ease of doing business country, then you are going to see a lot more foreign direct investors coming because the foreign investors are looking at where can I go and do business easily, where can I exit easily. Again, uh, as it relates to uh, what will incentivize Nigerian investors, the uh, issues about uh, incorporation of companies, one of the challenges we've had in the past, or we've always had, is that we have a huge proportion of informal sector in the economy. And as you know, foreign direct investors will not invest in any informal structure. They want some level of formalization. So if, uh, if this act encourages more people to incorporate their businesses, 
There are a lot of one-man businesses that should not be incorporated, but they are trained in the name of the individual. Mm -hmm. But now, the art will allow an individual to incorporate a business. And that way, you will see uh, people or, or outsiders, I mean, foreigners investing in an existing business. Uh, one of the reasons different between us and South Africa, for instance, is that in South Africa, you have a lot of formalization, which is why you have South African retail companies coming into this country. Uh, if you look at Nigeria business are doing the same business, similar business with South Africa, they are basically uh, family businesses, and therefore there's no formalization. So I think this, uh, the uh, prospect that this uh, new act will lead to formalization of the economy mm -hmm. will uh, attract a lot more foreign direct investment because they have local partners they can invest in. Um, I also think local investors will take advantage of issues like uh, uh, virtual meetings to reduce their cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. If you know what it takes uh, a public reported company to hold an annual general meeting, the cost of holding the annual general meeting, the, the distractions and the pressures that some shareholder groups that are holding in consequential shares bring to uh, try to disrupt the meetings, mm -hmm. and uh, what it takes to calm them or to keep them uh, friendly. I think this act that you now have virtual uh, AGMs will eliminate those costs, mm -hmm. and that will improve the bottom line of businesses. Mm. All right, let me go to Mr. Oyedele also, who's still on the line. Uh, let's talk about harmonizing. How would this act harmonize other efforts at effecting ease of business as well as integrate the work of related bodies uh, such as the Corporate Affairs Commission? Yeah, thank you. I think that's a very important uh, question in terms of how do we connect dots because you can have different pieces of initiatives here and there, and if you don't speak to each other, you don't get the result that you really want. Uh, so I think, first and foremost, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council has played a key role in making this common new law a reality, uh, but we also need to then harmonize this with the Economic Sustainability Plan and the Agenda 2050 that government is working on. We need to find a way to also align both our monetary and fiscal policy, and in fact, as well as our industrial policies with all of these. One of the good, thing, good things I, I also uh, observe in the newcomer is that the, the NASME, that's the uh, Association of the Small Businesses in Nigeria, are now on the board of the Corporate Affairs Commission, which means all the initiatives around SME, we now have a seat at the table. Uh, we need to also harmonize with issues around the, you know, competition, uh, you know, agency, issues to do with financial inclusion and also tax. So we see in the new law uh, that you don't need to do audited accounts if your turnover is around 120 million. But in the tax law, it only recognizes that you have to prepare audited financial statements so long as we are a company. So someone needs to find a way to harmonize that. Mm. Uh, but I think overall, uh, it's a good development. Uh, we have the ingredient now to make things uh, easier for us to do. Uh, but I'll use the analogy of the fact that you cannot make a good meal mm. without good ingredients. But the fact that you have good ingredients does not guarantee that your meal will be good. So we now have this piece of legislation. It is not perfect. But we have to implement it so that we, you know, have the maximum benefit mm. that they are there. I mean, that's a really good analogy that you have used. It's one that all of us can relate to. Uh, now, moving on to <laughs> moving on to Michelle, how does this act streamline our practices towards uh, global best practices? You know, if you like. Okay, so <clears throat> um, you know, just by virtue of the fact that um, this act is 30 years since the last in 1990. Um, there are a lot of things that have happened in the world of corporate practice that um, this act now takes cognizance of. Um, both things that we as practitioners were already doing in order to push the needle, as well as things that we have learned from foreign jurisdictions. Um, and I think as Johnson mentioned, that um, we expect that you know, with these new um, provisions in the act, especially provisions relating to you know, taking electronic um, processes on board, which is really something that the 21st century has heralded and COVID-19 has accelerated, um, then we might begin to see improvements in ease of doing business. 
I think another thing just to make mention of is also the fact of transparency, right? Um, you know, with issues that arose, you know, with um, Panama Papers, for example, and other um, scandals worldwide arising from trust structures, wherein, you know, I have a trust and I own a percentage in another company. Um, this act now brings in provisions that require disclosures of such trust um, structures and shareholding interest behind the scenes. And one expects that um, if properly utilized, um, it could be very well um, placed in ensuring that we have a more transparent corporate regime. Michelle, we will now go to, uh, lastly, to Mr. Chuku. I mean, what aspects of this act is immediately applicable to your clients? I think uh, a, a several aspects of the uh, new act will apply to the, my clients, one of which I did mention the issue of virtual meetings, uh, AGM meetings. Um, for the quoted companies, a couple of them are my clients. They already have electronic uh, share registers because uh, with CSCS and the registers, they virtually um, we virtually dispense with the physical register. So that is already applicable. The other area that I think will apply almost immediately is that uh, companies will do away with the company seal. A lot of banks are already asking companies that they don't want the seal as uh, part of their account opening mandate. So companies will when many of them will uh, dispense with the uh, seal. Small companies will dispense with the need to go and prepare an audited account. In the first place, audited account of small and medium scale enterprises are actually useless. To the extent that banks, they don't form the basis of banks to make a judgment call on granting loans to them or not. Banks will rather rely on the bank statements of those um, small and medium scale enterprises to determine their cash flow. They are likely not going to consider their audited account. So it was just a waste of resources and which was just a matter of formality for them to comply with the law. Uh, small business also, I also expect many of them to dispense with the need to have company secretaries. In a lot of small businesses, they actually have no effective company secretary. What they just do is that maybe the dad, the father will be the chairman and then get uh, the wife to be the secretary or any of the children to be the secretary just to sign the meet formalities. Uh, the other areas I think will come into place immediately is that uh, big companies, uh, quoted companies, are going to have somebody combine the role of chairman and uh, uh, managing director. That separation, that corporate governance separation is absolutely necessary and I think it will be implemented immediately. Uh, I also think a couple of uh, high profile directors sit on the board of more than one, five quoted companies. That they now have to choose on which ones to step down from uh, based on their priorities. This I think will immediately uh, become operational. Uh, then finally you also need to know that, like I said earlier, I expect a lot of small businesses, a lot of uh, one-man businesses to incorporate, and then save the shareholders or the owners the burden of limitless liability. Because once you incorporate the company and you put in your own share uh, capital into that company, that is the limit of your uh, liability as it relates to that business. Uh, currently, you have situations where something goes wrong, and then you find out that whatever the man has worked on his life is lost. So I think a lot more businesses will uh, need to adopt those things and implement uh, the, some of those sections.